All right, folks. Welcome to Nino's Corner TV Fluff Tube Edition. I'm joined with John Rich. Man, John Rich is is making the headlines right now, and he's really come out with a huge, huge, huge hit. This was top five, right? It was a number one revelations. Was it number one on the charts? Yeah, it it wound up number two overall uh, in all genres. But uh, yeah, for for there was times it was one, then two, then three, then one. So it was it was hovering up in that area the whole time. I think there's been a massive like paradigm shift, right? The old industry is coming down, old Hollywood, the old entertainment system in entertainment system is just crumbling down. The fact that you're able to to get rid of the middleman, that you don't need labels anymore, that you're able to do this on your own and bypass the entire system and have a hit song is n- never before seen, right? Well, you know, there's two sides of tech. Um, there's a side we all hate that's used to manipulate us, all the, all the things that tech does. Then on the other side of that, it allows you to do what you're describing right now, which is a guy like me who spent decades playing music and selling, selling millions of records and building up, you know, big audiences. I can take that same tech that they're using to shut me up and I can take it and flip it the other direction and blast a message out and go all the way around them. It's, it's similar to uh, the story of David and Goliath where most people think David killed Goliath with the rock by hitting him in the head with the rock. And the truth is the rock knocked him down. And then David took Goliath's own sword. He took his weapon and he cut Goliath's head off with his own weapon. So uh, th- those analogies mean something, man. I mean, that you know, it's like like I've said, if, if the Lord operated that way back to the beginning and he says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever, my word does not change, that means exactly what it means. It means in 2024 and beyond, he does not change. However he deals with things, that's how he deals with them. So, you know, people like myself, people like you, uh, that that take the enemy's weapon, tech and then twist it and use it in the opposite direction that that's a that's an age old tactic man i can't wait to get into this podcast folks stay tuned uh but first get your three harmful foods folks you got to get your three harmful foods we live in the most advanced era in human history there have never been more medical breakthroughs than there are right now (laughs) and we're not seeing many of them in my opinion so why are so many millions of americans unhealthy overweight more so than they've ever been According to U.S. board-certified physician and expert nutritionist Dr. Amy Lee, one of the main reasons is three harmful foods that are being passed off as health foods all over the country. And wait till you hear this. Because these foods can cause weight gain, clog your digestive tract, deplete your energy, and wreck your skin, they are banned in other countries. Yet, shockingly, they're still legal in the U.S., and it's time someone shine a light on what they are. Dr. Amy Lee does just that while explaining how the side effects from these foods are wreaking havoc on the health of millions of Americans. The great news is it's easy to stop and reverse this damage by simply learning which foods to avoid and how to how to spot them. Uh, and by doing so, you can experience easy weight loss, smooth digestion, and vibri- vibrant energy and skin. Go to the th- Find out what the three fake foods are. Go to 3harmfulfoods.com forward slash Nino, folks. It's down there in the link below. Get started. <laughs> all right man john i've been looking forward to this uh this uh podcast because man we we share a lot of the same beliefs we both know like right now the core of all of this is a spiritual war that's where we're in and really i've been awake really since 9 11 you know that's kind of like the first wave that's when i got a, i became awake and i was like man i watched those buildings come down and i was like ah that I've seen that in Vegas, you know, and then I started doing my own research and learning more about what happened. Fast forward to 2020, I was fully ready for whatever they were going to throw at us. Okay. I knew this was coming before it even came. So I was way ahead of the ball, but really in the last four years from 2020 to 2024, what I didn't expect to happen to me. And it's happened to a lot of people. I went full circle. I kind of left the Bible in my awakening and went right back to it. And Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I fell away, whatever you want to say. I was into the sacred geometry. I was into all the um, all the other stuff that was coming with my awakening. And I went right back to the Bible. And I realized now more than ever, the demonic presence on this planet and how we really are in a spiritual battle. And in, thanks to people like you, also waking people up with the songs like Revelation. I mean, thank you. 
Because when I see something like that, I'm like, wow, this guy's he thinks like I do. We are in this. What started your awakening? How did you start waking up to this? How did this all begin for you? Well, so my dad's been a preacher since he was 19. He's 72 years old now. My dad uh, preached in prisons and in the streets mainly. He preached in, in Mardi Gras uh, 34 years in a row. He went down to Mardi Gras and stood on the French Quarter with a guitar singing gospel songs and preaching. Try that one on. Yeah. I mean, anybody out there think you're tough, try that one on for a minute. Um, and so I grew up around that, understanding what it took to really uh, chase down what God wants you to do. And it's never easy what he wants you to do. It's a uh, matter of fact, it, it is. It's the most brutal thing you could ever do. He's not going to ever ask you to do easy stuff. You think dying on the cross was easy? Oh. I mean, you think what the 12 disciples went through and all the prophets, I mean, most of them wound up in prison or dead. And so in, in this, you know, yes, when my awakening happened, I mean, as a kid, I gave my life to Jesus when I was a kid with my dad. Then I got in the music industry and, you know, I have a high school diploma, uh, grew up in a double white trailer in Amarillo, Texas. That's the extent of my pedigree. And so when you get Are out you there, you still in have, Texas. I'm in Nashville now. You're in Nashville now. That's in right. Nashville. Okay. But when you get out there and you have immense success, um, I'm talking millions and millions of records, um, horrific amounts of hit songs I was writing for myself and a lot of other people, including Taylor Swift, wrote one on her record back in the day. Oh yeah, I knew her back when she was 17, 18. Wow. Um, wow. And she went to the other side, basically, the way I see it. I mean, 100%. Yeah. 100%. You can, I mean, you can see it in her own live concerts, what she's doing yeah. now. Um, but when you, when you hit those levels like that, it's real easy to, that, that becomes what you worship. You worship that. I love country music. You know, I love it. I love having the, I loved having the success in it, but I, I loved even more having the respect of it, like having, the industry acknowledged me having other big uh, singer songwriters that I looked up to acknowledge me or call me on the phone or want to write a song with me or whatever. Like th those, those levels are not many people ever hit that. And so that became like, in my mind, well, that's what I was built to do. I was built to do that. And then as those decades roll by, you start to realize I got married. I had, had my two sons and I went, hang on a minute. I'm out here playing patty cake with the enemy. Yeah. And I'm the guy sitting in my chair yelling at the TV and then putting my gear on and walking down the red carpet with the exact same ideolo ideology of people that I was just yelling at. So what does that make me? Right. A hypocrite. You're part of it. it. Makes me a hypocrite. Yeah. I mean, I'm not pushing what they're doing, but I'm complicit with it because I'm, I'm elbow to elbow with it. I'm not calling them out. And so I thought, well, what are my boys going to be looking at in another 15 or 20 years? Because if it's this bad right now, what's it going to look like when they're grown? And I'm the blueprint, dad. And they're going to look at me and go, well, I don't know. How did dad deal with it? Well, dad yelled at the TV a lot, but at the end of the day, he took the check and just kept going. Right. So that's probably what we should do. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. And I said, yeah, that is not going to be the blueprint my boys have. It's not going to happen. And so at that point is when I really started, this was maybe seven, eight years ago, really started trying to understand what are we looking at here? And that's when I returned back to the Bible, really reading it. I went and started sitting down with my dad a lot, who has 50 plus years of, of digging and understanding and asking for understanding. And um, light bulbs started going off and I went, wow, because if you base if you base your thoughts, Nino, on what other human beings are saying, like, I believe this is going to happen because so-and-so said it, mm -hmm. or I believe this is in our future because this group of people say it. If that's really what you rely on, you're going to be sorely disappointed. You have to go look at, and they may be right to a certain degree, but the real truth is not them. The real truth is no human being is the real truth. The only actual absolute truth is what it says in the book, what was written down, and go read the words of Jesus Christ himself. It's all throughout. 
um, what he talks about in the end times, what he says is going to happen prior to him coming back. And then what's going to happen after he comes back. And, and some of those, uh, some of those messages and passages and scriptures over the centuries, actually at this point have been taken, twisted and repositioned and reintroduced uh, to Christians all around the world in a false way, which has put a lot of Christians to sleep, put a lot of Christians into the mindset of, well, I'll never have to deal with any of this stuff. So it's not going to affect me. So there's no point in me jumping into this because he's just going to pull me out before any of the bad stuff happens. The rapture. A lot of, right. A lot of Christians believe they'll be out of here before any bad stuff happens. That's what the majority of my audience believes. I'm going to tell you that right now. Well, and I think and we're I living in, a, and I don't doubt that. And, and, yeah. that, and listen, it, that is not what we call a salvation issue. You're not going to go to heaven or hell based on what you think about that subject. However, it is a dangerous state of mind to be in for a Christian because when things start to happen, as outlined, the greatest chapter, I believe, is Matthew 24. Everybody thinks it's all in Revelation. Go read Matthew 24. When those things begin to happen, and they are still here, when the mark of the beast shows up, when the Antichrist makes himself known, when all these things are happening and, and, and these Christians are still here, they're going to be really confused about that. You know, and, and it makes them susceptible to making critical, critical mistakes and errors if they think, well, that can't be the Antichrist because I'm still here. That can't be the mark of the beast because I'm still here and I've been taught my whole life I would not be here when that shows up. So you know what? Sign me up. I'm in. Well, I, Let's go. You see, you understand the danger of that? Yeah, and I was just, uh, it's already happening. I mean, I, I'm wondering if the Antichrist is going to be a person or a system like AI or something like that. I mean, when I go to Whole Foods now, they want you to pay with your palm, and I can't believe people are lining up to do this. Yeah. I'm like, wow. I mean, this is it. Well, I mean, that's plain as day to me. I mean, and I cannot believe people are smiling, like cutting through the lines, like doing their palm thing. And I'm just like, that's this is all the beginning. This is all the start. So I have no doubt right now that we are in Revelations. Well, let's answer that last question you had there, the difference between the Antichrist and the, and the beast. The, the beast, the mark of it, the mark of the beast, it's very important to go back and you look in like a Strong's Concordance, which is a, a place where you can look up a particular word and a particular verse, and you can find out what the original Hebrew or Greek or Chaldean word was. That they originally used because remember the bible was translated by english-speaking people mainly um and so they'll do the best they can the beast the mark of that beast that is the system the beast is the system that's the globalized system that that is put in place in this in this world the antichrist is absolutely a real person the antichrist it says it says that he will declare himself to be God and he will perform miracles as though he is God. And in to such a degree that even the elect, meaning even the most staunch followers and in, in, uh, of Jesus Christ are at risk of being deceived by it. That's how believable. Think of it this way. He will be the best counterfeit Jesus Christ. You can possibly imagine. He will declare himself as such. Do you think that, you know, I talk about this on my program a lot about the coming alien threat or the coming alien card that they're going to play. I mean, just like the, what they played in 2020, just like 9-11, they're getting ready to play this uh, alien card. Uh, many people have come out from their three-letter agencies warning about this. Do you think it's going to be a um, uh, 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 an alien... I, I can't believe I'm saying this. Do you think it could be a human looking alien from another planet or whatever? They, they try to push on us and say he's a savior of humanity. They're going to teach us how to live together, save us from ourselves. Do you think it's going to be a world leader? Uh, do you think it could be just the AI system? What, what, what do you think this, do you think he's already here? Do you think this person's here? Do you think we know who he is already? <laughs> I just so wish you had more questions. Loaded man. questions. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I said, I said, I just wish you had some more questions. No, those you're asking all the right questions. And honestly, Nino, I think you represent multitudes of human beings that are asking the same questions right now. Um, you know, people need to understand the difference between angels and demons and God himself. God himself is not bound by space or time. 
It says he is omnipresent. He is everywhere all the time. He is not bound by anything. His creation, though, is. He did create the angels. That's one of his creations. What are demons? Demons are angels that made war with God behind Lucifer, and they lost, and a third of the angels were cast out of heaven. Okay, so those are what we now call demons and angels. They are bound by space and time. They are bound. They, they can't travel like God travels. God doesn't have to travel. They have to travel. Put it to you that way. So when somebody says, these are the aliens or whatever, I would say, I, I would beg to differ. They might be something else. Fallen. They, they're the fallen. They, sure. and, you know, I've heard that they come through interdimensionally um, that, you know, and I've yeah, had a lot of guests. They, There's a lot of people right now in this, this, there's a huge uptick in this new age religion where, you know, you have a lot of people coming out saying Jesus Christ was an alien and, and you go, you have oh, ancient, sure. a, you have ancient aliens on the history channel. And it really looks like they're really doing the predictive programming right now, the conditioning to get everybody mm -hmm. lockstep on this, on this agenda. So when it comes, people are like, Oh, well, yeah, I mean, of course, right. we were seated by aliens. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's that's the way the mass delusion happens. And, it, it, you know, at the end, the, the Battle of Armageddon is basically every army on the earth trains its weapons on the same thing coming in from the sky because it's an invasion or whatever it is. But I mean, it, will it even be real? Will it be holograms? Will it be no way to know? Blue Project I mean, Bluebeam? Yeah, when Jesus. I mean, when Jesus comes back, it's real. So do you think Jesus real. comes back before this? So, so let's, let's get into that. Okay. Matthew 24. Everybody's got access to Matthew 24. If you've got an iPhone or computer, you've got access to Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is when the disciples were sitting with Jesus and they asked him, they said, Lord, what will, what will be happening in the earth before you come back? What are the signs we should be looking for, Lord? And he basically says, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. And for the next 30 plus verses, Jesus Christ himself starts laying out play by play by play by play. And then this will happen. And then that will happen. And then this and then this and then this and then this. And he gets all the way to the end of this list of really rocking things, man. I mean, things that are not going to be pleasant. He gets to the end of the list. He says, and then you will see the sign of the coming of the son of man, meaning himself. Then you will see it. Damn. So go read that. Go read Matthew 24. All your listeners, when you get through watching this interview, go read it and don't read it once. Read it four or five times and make notes and think it through verse by verse by verse, because that will tell you what to look for. Uh, one, one of the things it says will happen, it's, uh, it's called it's um, <laughs> it's called the abomination of desolation, which was also talked about by Daniel back in the old Testament, which was 500 years prior to Jesus talking about it. But Jesus actually was quoting Daniel quite a compliment to Daniel. I would say, yeah. Uh, talking about the abomination of desolation. What that is, that is when the antichrist, they call him the son of perdition is how he's referred to in Matthew 24. When the son of perdition takes his place and, and it takes the holy place, meaning has the says, I have the authority of the holy one. I am God. I am. I am the Messiah. I am him. When that happens, they call, refer to that as the abomination of desolation. When that happens, Nino, that very next verse says, when you see that happen, run, run, run the other way, run. It says not only run, it says, woe to the women who were who were giving birth at that time do if you're on the rooftop do not come down to grab your coat run if you're out in the field do not return to your house to grab anything get out because that is the spot where things go all the way down another another issue a lot of christians mistake or confuse is wrath and i've heard a lot of people say since that tucker carlson interview i've had a lot of christian people come at me upset which is fine because they're thinking, they're thinking about this. They don't like what I said, but that I pointed it out. It's not an opinion. It's Matthew 24 and other places. But it, it does say in the Bible that God will not rain his wrath down on his people. His people will not feel his wrath. 
But Nino, there is a difference between the wrath of God and the wrath of Satan. He does not say the wrath of Satan will never touch his people. Right. He says his wrath, because his wrath is final. His wrath, you cannot, you cannot survive God's wrath, and he will not put his children through that. But you will have to go through the wrath of Satan himself. And that has existed throughout the entire written word. I always ask people, do you think Noah was raptured out of the flood? And everybody says, well, no. I go, right. God told him ahead of time to build a boat. And it's up and to so him to he listen. Did. <laughs> he had to listen and it's he had to will. take action. Yeah. And he got mocked and ridiculed and scorned for a hundred, couple hundred years, however long it took him to build it. Like, what do you look at this idiot building a boat? I mean, right. God, Noah's an idiot. You know, he's like, God told me to do it, you know, so he's at it. But then here comes the flood. Do you think Noah was probably having a great time when, when the flood started happening? Every no. person, everything he ever knew was being wiped off the face of the earth. Do you think he was really enjoying that experience? I highly doubt it. But the same wrath that brought that flood, that flood also raised Noah to safety and let Noah start over. You can go to Daniel in the lion's den. I mean, did God spare Daniel at all from being thrown in that lion's den? No, the lions were in there and so was Daniel. And the point was, I hope he gets eaten. That's what the Babylonians wanted to see. But God closed the jaws of that of those lions. Do you think Daniel was really pumped about getting thrown into that lion's den? His buddy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego those guys refused to bow to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, if you don't bow to the king, we're going to throw you in a furnace. We're going to burn you alive. They said, we're not going to do it. We're not going to bow to this king. I'm sorry. We're not going to do it. So they tied their hands together, tied their feet together, built a fire so hot in this furnace. It says that when, when the men went to throw them in, they were burned up. They died. That's a whoosh. You can just imagine that fire rushing out of that thing. And they throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into that furnace. And everybody went, well, that's the end of that. And then they kind of looked through the whatever window to see the ash. And they went, hang on a minute. We put three men in there, but I see four walking around and one looks like the son of God. Wow. And the ropes were burned off and the, and the shackles were burned off. And they walked back out and said they didn't even smell like smoke when they walked out. So explain to me this. Why are modern day American Christians fat, lazy, fence riding american christians better than daniel or noah or shadrach meshach right. and, and abednego why are we better than them why would god think more highly of us to spare us from any of the things that's coming down down the road he won't he will not spare us from it he will give us a way to survive it he will protect us throughout it but it will be going on and again, that's back to Matthew 24. That flies in the face of 90% of all the doctrines preached in churches today. You know, I uh, if you just look around, I mean, you just see them. They're so arrogant now, and the agenda is just in your face. This, this spiritual war, this demonic agenda is in all of the music. It's in all of the movies. It's in all of entertainment. It's in politics. Obviously, we can see it played as day in politics. Mm-hmm. I've always wondered, is it is it is it saturated in country music as well? I mean, I know you kind of bypassed the system and, and you did your own thing and boom, you hit it big. You you hit a top charted song. I mean, wow. You did mm -hmm. this on your own. You you bypassed the system. How bad is country music compared to like hip hop and you know, we see all this stuff with P. Diddy and all this stuff coming out now. How bad is the realm of country music? Because I look at country and it's like eh, it's getting bigger, by the way. It's getting a lot bigger. Yeah. But how bad is country? And I'm sure it's I'm probably you're probably gonna say just as bad, correct? <laughs> well, art, artist, artist by artist, it's not anything near. It does exist, but it's nothing like what you see in in pop and other genres like that. But the industry itself, it's the same companies that run Hollywood. It's Sony, Universal, and Warner Brothers. They own 90% of all the record labels out there. There it's all conglomerized at this point, just conglomerates. And they have their ideologies. And if you don't play ball with that, um, they'll just blackball you, kick you out or whatever. You'll never be heard from. So you were in, you were under contract for how many years? I was under contract at uh, Sony for 
about nine years and I was under contract with Warner Brothers for about 15 years. But this song you just did on your own, I want to get right. into this because because for such a time as now, this song, this song really struck a chord with a lot of people, obviously. How many millions upon yeah. millions of downloads does it have? I mean, this song hit huge. Um, and yeah. I'm going to play it right now just so people, obviously my audience definitely have heard this song. Uh, I heard it. I was just blown away by it. You say that you channeled this song. How did this song come to you? Well, yeah, I don't like the word channeled. Okay. But but uh Came from God. I would say I would I would say it was a forced download. It's like you like you're minding your own business and all of a sudden you can you're like what's going on and it's almost like uh you know warning warning uh, un, unauthorized download. Like that's what it felt like. And I could hear the I could hear the words, the melody and the rhythm of this chorus rolling and rolling and rolling and I was like is this a song I've heard before? Is this like something I and I went, no, what is this? I was like, this is a brand new song. What am I hearing right now? And I just stopped and went, I better write this down. So I grabbed a, a pencil and some paper and a, and a guitar off the wall and started writing down what I was hearing. Got you know, got a guitar and went, okay, there's the chords. And in about 60 minutes, the song was done. And then the question was, I'm, I'm walking around listening to it. I did a little voice note thing. I'm listening to it over and over and over. And the hair's raising up on my arm. And I'm like, what in the world is this? So I walk over to the window and I, I look up and I go, what do you want me to do with this? I mean, I mean, it has lyrics like brimstone upon their heads and millstones around their necks. They'll feel the shaking when the trumpet sounds. And no matter where they hide, there'll be nowhere to run when Jesus puts his mighty foot on the ground. That's the second verse. Wow. I mean, where are you going to put a song like that? Radio's not going to play that. I mean, Fox News won't even let me sing that. Too aggressive. Too have you have you been on Fox News necks. though? Right, you've been on Fox News since I've been on Fox News a million times, but not with this song. Really, really, wow, really, really. That's Holy exactly cow. right. Wow. And so the message back from the boss was basically, don't get in a hurry with this. Make make the audio as great as you can. Make a video as compelling as you can, and then hang tight. I'll let you know what to do. I'm so going to play this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play it in, in its in its uh, entirety. Is that okay? Oh, I would love that, man. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. So this is it right here, folks. Revelation. <laughs> The people cursed his name, bowed at the altar of the father of lies. But there's a number to their days, and all their evil ways. The Lord's gonna turn away from all their cries. Upon their heads, millstones around their necks. They'll feel the shaking when the trumpet sounds. And no matter where they hide, there'll be nowhere to run when Jesus puts his mighty foot on the ground. Flash. 
just set fire to the evil ones and all the wickedness they've done. There'll be no time to turn around as the stars begin to hit the ground and the mountains fall and the veil is torn with the sound of that seventh horn. Oh, revelation, I can feel it coming like a dime. read those verses you read verse 11 there and and they the brethren overcame him by the blood of the lamb meaning jesus and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death explain to me how when they who overcame him did the angels overcome him no they the brethren christians god's people overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Now explain to me how that verse exists. If we're all pulled out of here before that happens. Right. That makes sense to me. You're correct. Makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, it says it. I mean, if you just look at like the jet and this kind of reminds me of like, um, just this has to happen in my mind sooner than later because the advancements of AI and basically we got to, I feel like we have to kind of have a fighting chance. If you look at generation Z it's like they're obsessed with their social media. They're obsessed with Instagram, with uh, Facebook, um, X, the whole, all the social media platforms, TikTok. I mean, that's their God now. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's the youth's God now. Like, I feel like this. We're like right at the precipice. We're right there now. Right. I mean, yeah. isn't that the same way you see it? I mean, we got to have some kind of fighting well, chance because the youth today. Yeah, there's a sec there's a second layer to what you're saying is that social media and all these things is what they worship. What but what what are they actually worshiping through social media? Themselves. Yeah. Narcissism. It's worship of Look self. at narcissism, yeah. It's worship of self. That's the whole that's the whole point. And so if you worship yourself or anything else other than the boss, you're you're cooked. I mean, money can be you. your god social media sure. can be your god there's different things that could be your god yourself your, your, yourself yourself can be your oh god. and, and right. look at narcissism now look how bad this is everyone thinks they're famous you could have 300 followers whatever and they're like oh, <laughs> you know it's all about me looking at your phone you know i'm i'm a recovering alcoholic and everyone knows that i i've been you know four months four years and nine months now and and i i've gone back into the bar to, to go visit some friends say hello to them and i see the 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 change of these people that are just no one's socializing and they're all on their phones, just looking at themselves, going into a corner by themselves, talking into the phone. It's just it's lunacy, man. It's insanity. I've never seen anything like this. What's what's the best way to get people. To ignore God and at worst case, destroy him in their own minds. Give them a false God. That's why it says, you know, put, put no other God before me, because if you do. It's exactly where you're at. I mean, when it says that that the devil roams around the earth as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. I mean, wow. he 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 is running loose, and his whole thing is eat up as many humans as he can before his days are done. And you know, people ask me, so what am I supposed to do? I mean, <laughs> what what do I got to do? And I had an interview with Jordan Peterson. Go watch that one. Yeah. about this um the only question you should really be concerned with is not trying to figure out every nook and cranny 
of what's about to take place in the future. That's fine to try to understand it as well as you can. But the main thing every human being needs to focus on is when you die and you will, it says to be absent from the flesh is to be present with God. Boom, it happens just like that. Boom, instantaneously. And you are standing in front of who created you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Boom, the Trinity, there they are. Your resume is not going to get you through. The amount of followers you have is not going to get you through. The good works that you've done on the earth is not going to get you through. Who you voted for is not going to get you through. Reading the Bible, going to church is not going to get you through. Working real hard and taking care of your family is not going to get you through. There's only one way you get through. And that is when you die and your spirit, which is the actual real you, that's what Nino actually is. Nino's not the big guy that, that boxes. That's just what Nino lives in for a while. When the yeah, real Nino is cut loose. <laughs> when the real Nino is cut loose and the real anybody is cut loose, the only only way you're going to get into heaven, spend eternity with him, is if when you stand in front of him, he does not see you. He sees his son because his son is inside of you. And is he going to let his own son into heaven every single time? He doesn't turn his own away, doesn't turn his son away. But all the other reasons you're going to give him are not going to mean anything to him. And that that is the real risk people are in these days is they believe if I can do just just enough good works, if I can just help enough people, if I can just be enough of a patriot, if I can just whatever it is, is not going to amount to a hill of beans to him. The best example of that is the thief on the cross. So Jesus was being crucified. And on either side of him were two other men being crucified. Crucifixion was a, was the, one of the worst possible ways you could kill somebody back then. It was very creative. So if you're being crucified, man, you did something real bad, real bad. And so one of the guys on the cross next to Jesus was cussing Jesus out, blaspheming him. Get off the cross him, whatever he was the doing. Savior, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the other one looked at Jesus and he said, I believe you're, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you are him. And Jesus looked at him and said, today I'll see you in paradise, meaning today wow. I'll see you in heaven. Yeah. And that guy never did any good works. That guy never helped anybody ever. He's being crucified for something. You know what I mean? So God's forgiveness is immediate, but it's only immediate if you really submit, you really believe in him and you really submit. I gave the analogy on Tucker Carlson about belief and faith. What's the difference in belief and faith? I'm sitting in a chair right now. And so are you, Nino. Well, before I sat down in this chair, I looked at the chair. I said, I believe that chair will hold me up. Looks like a pretty good chair. And I could stand there for the rest of my life and believe that chair will hold me up. But until I sit down in that chair and take all my weight off my own legs, that always hold me up. And now I'm relying on the chair to hold me up. I don't have faith that the chair will hold me up. That is exactly how it is with Jesus Christ. You know, there's a lot of podcasters out there talking about the culture war. This is a culture war. And, and I see that aspect of it. But I always say this is a spiritual war, first and foremost. That's actually what it is. And we're seeing it now more than ever. You see it in the the Olympic ceremony. You see it in the f wow. halftime show, Super Bowl halftimes, all the commercials now. People, it's to the point where people are even desensitized to it. They're just taking in this programming. Um. More than yeah. ever, I mean, we I believe this country has got to get back to to God, to the Christian roots of what it was, what it was meant to be. You said in, on Tucker Carlson, I, I heard you say that this is a near death experience for America. I've had I've had a guest that comes on quite frequently on my show, uh, Juan O'Saban, who talks about that, saying that we are going to go through a near death and a near death is not. Oh, we just yeah. barely missed it. A near death is boom. It's in like fact. a head on collision. We are yeah. dead and we be when we're brought back to life. Is that what you see happening for America? Well, look at look at the modus operandi of the Lord. Okay. Just go back and read what he did. Um, I go back to Daniel. Daniel was a great example. Daniel was a patriot. He loved his country. He he was a proud Israeli, proud, proud Hebrew. And God raised up Nebuchadnezzar as the emperor of Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar invaded them 
took Daniel and all of his friends, took Daniel now. Let's remember who Daniel is. Someone Jesus Christ quoted in Matthew 24. Yeah. Daniel, one of the, I mean, you and I are not Daniel, okay? He allowed Daniel to be chained, castrated, and thrown into a pit and left to die. But God allowed him to survive it. And eventually, as God worked it back up, Daniel became basically running the Babylonian Empire when Nebuchadnezzar was, was out, of, out of joint there at the end. So the point is, to your question, what's it going to take for Americans to turn back to the one true God? What's it going to take? He's told us that didn't work. He's allowed things to happen in our country that were pretty bad. That didn't work either. It just accelerated beyond that. So what's left? What's left? What is if, if God has a lot of people in this country, a lot. But what's he going to have to do? for them and then the ones who are not his people to repent and turn? What's he going to have to do to get America to finally turn back to him? I shudder to think what yeah. that is. I will also say that all the plans we hear about, that they have plans and they have plans, and there's this plan, the other plan, the plan, that plan. Right. That's all fine and well. Guess who can upend all your plans with a flick of his pinky? Yeah. the boss <laughs> yeah. he can just go nice plan guys I, yeah. uh, hey bravo that's funny you know what? that would have that would have worked except now this is going to happen right. boom and flip yeah. the whole thing upside down he can do right. whatever he wants and that that's why none of us actually know okay it's it, it, don't let it chew up your mind to such a degree of trying to game play what's going to happen do what noah did build your boat keep your family close to you Stay as close to the Lord as you possibly can. Read, read, read. Find other people that are also reading the book. Talk with them. Get with them. You don't have to be in some big fancy church. It can be a it can be over Zoom. It can be going over to somebody's house. I, I don't I don't trust wife, the churches husband, now, your... man. I, I'll, I'll be right. honest. And, and since this is going on YouTube, just know that I kind of use code words and stuff like that. But a, a lot of the churches, even here in, in my in my city, I saw signs come in for your. You know, for this, uh -huh. come in and get that. Uh, oh, we're practicing Pride Month this month. I mean, it's like, dude, this is yeah. not. They, they, to me, they're captured operations now. Do you agree with that? So for me, yeah. I much rather be on a Zoom call with someone talking about this or reading the Bible myself. Let me tell you, I was born uh, Catholic. I was an altar boy. I've kind of left that. I, I don't really. I'm going a different direction. In fact, I'm going to get baptized very soon. For my own free right. will, I want to, yeah, I want to do it for my own Excellent. free will. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it with my own Excellent. free will. Excellent. A lot of people tell me, "Oh, you were already baptized as a baby," blah blah blah. But no, I'm no, my own free will. But exactly. With where we're at today, like I, I don't even know. I, I don't trust anything, John. Nothing. I, I look at everything now like as deceptive. Everything's just. I'm like, okay, what's the angle here? What are they trying to do? With all the celebrities, I mean, I see it plain as day. Like you have. So many of them that are just, you know, picking their lanes right now and really making these like Justin Timberlake, Taylor Swift, just to name a couple that are really picking their side. It's not many that come out um, with a banger like you, bam, that just come up under the radar, right? You came up right under the radar and bam, it torpedoed the Titanic. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's going to take, man? Men like you that just, do you think that the men that are called by God are going to come under the radar and we're going to be the ones that sink the ship? Well, you know, he calls very unlikely people to, to, to speak. Yeah. Moses, Moses had a speech impediment. Moses was not a good speaker and God picked him to go tell the most powerful man in the world to let his people go. Yeah. I mean, th these, these examples go on forever. Um, what you said about churches, here's the scripture that says, that talks about them. Second Chronicles 714. Go look this one up. I'm going to paraphrase it. It says, it's very famous though, very quoted passage. If my people, Christians, who were called by my name, Christians, will humble themselves and turn from their evil ways, I will come and I will heal their land. That, that's a paraphrase of it. Here's the part Christians like to blow right past, and preachers especially. It does not say, Nino, if the devil's people 
will turn from their wicked ways. If the devil's people will humble themselves and repent, I will stop this from coming down on you. It says, if my people who are called by my name, they, they, I, am, I dwell in them. They are, they are actual Christians. That, that begs the question, can Christians be involved in, in wicked ways? Yeah, apparently so. Because he's, he's telling them if they will turn from their wicked ways. So I can be involved in wicked ways. You can be involved in wicked ways. The biggest preacher in the world can be, probably is. I mean, he basically what that's saying by default is that these things are happening to your country and to your world because of you, not because of the what the devil's doing. It's happening because of what my people are doing. And until my people turn, this is not going to stop. This is going to increase and increase and increase until you finally have had enough and you humble yourselves to the point where you'll turn back to me. That's all you need to know. There, there is no, there's no other way to make it stop. No other say, way. When you say my people, uh, I think you touched on this with Tucker Carlson and I, and I, I paid attention to this and I was like, huh, I want to, I made a mental note. Like, I want to ask him about this. Okay. Do you, do you think this comes down to bloodlines? Is this a bloodline war? And it's, it, you know, I know it's spiritual, but is there, when you say my people, are there certain people that are not of God that are here on this planet that are of Lucifer? Is that the bloodline war? Oh, it's possible. I mean, it's uh, the, you know, because I, I hear this a lot on my program. Well, like, listen, well, people, people go on rabbit holes again. It, it, it's fine to go think about that. Again, when you die, what do you, how are you going to get in? I mean, that's the ultimate. Uh, in Genesis 6, it talks about, the, the sons of light, the sons of Lucifer came to earth and married the daughters of men, found them yes, fair, and to them were born children. We refer to them the as Nephilim. the men now. The Nephilim, and, yeah, correct. And there were giants okay. in the land and all of that. So that was the devil's original tactic. Uh, his, his whole plan is to pollute the earth, the earth's population, to such a point that there's nothing for Jesus to come back for. That's his whole plan. So we tried it back then by breeding with everybody and create just polluting the bloodline to the point where there's nobody to come back for but then it says noah found grace in the eyes of the lord and there, there's one guy whose family's still intact he goes okay build a boat you better do it it actually says you know that god god said that he regretted making mankind in the first place wow go read that wow. he was he used the word grieved he was so grieved that he regretted making it creating mankind in the first place okay you're not dealing with santa claus in the sky you were dealing with the alpha the omega the 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 one who exists and creates existence that was the original hebrew ways way of describing him so it says if my people who he's talking about are people that have accepted him as their as their savior and he dwells inside of them he is in them my people, my people called by my name. It doesn't matter if you're South Korean, American, Eskimo, no matter who you are, a human being that has Jesus Christ in them and is who he's talking about. So I was always under the impression, and, and I've had many guests talk about this on my show, that Lucifer corrupted the seed of Adam. And he beguiled Eve and had sex with Eve, and they had she had two offspring. I've heard this theory, okay? I don't, I don't know if it's <laughs> okay. true. You don't, I'm not a Bible scholar, dude. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. I've always thought that, that there was two bloodlines, the one of Cain and Abel, and one is from Lucifer, one is from God. Am I right in saying that, or am I completely off? Well, I mean, I'm sorry. Were any of us alive when Cain and Abel were there? Right. I don't know. I, and exactly. go, go, show me, go show me the scripture that says that. Okay. It's not, but have not you heard this before? Am I, am I off I've, here? I've heard all kinds of stuff, man. Okay. All kinds of stuff. Okay. Here's the thing. Human beings... God, it says you're created in the image of God. You're created in his image. He loves you more than anything he's ever created. He put you in this weak little terrible body, but this, this spirit that never dies, the real you, in this crappy little flesh pocket that's susceptible to everything in the world. Then he turns the devil loose, wide open. Remember, the devil can only do what God allows him to do. Right. That's another, that's right. another true statement. Right, 100%. Turns him loose. And then puts us out here, and the only way we're going to survive this and spend eternity with him is we got to we got to bring him in, and I mean, hang on to that and lock in as tight as we can, and be deadly serious about it, like really submit to him. You can't ride the fence, and so 
knowing that he created humanity like that, any human being that is fully human being can give their life to Jesus Christ at any second. Hillary Clinton, if she's fully human being, can do that. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> if. <laughs> if she's fully human being, I assume she is. Um, you know, so again, you know, I, I, I have watched, I have watched several of your shows, and I have heard people say things like that. And it, it while it's interesting to think about, it means absolutely nothing in the final second of your life and the first second of eternity means absolutely nothing, nothing. It means less than nothing. And so people that get sidetracked on things like that and go way off out in there and spend months and months and months trying to wrap their heads around it. In the meantime, they could have a car wreck and die right. and go straight to 100%. hell. You know, so, so that my job is to come in over the top here and go, hang on. You guys talk about that all you want. This is what you ought to be talking about. Lock in up here. And if you do that, a lot of this other stuff will start to make sense. You'll be able to, it's, it's, you know, you'll be able to divine between what is, what is true, what is false. Uh, discernment is what it's referred to. King Solomon could have asked for anything. He asked for discernment. And the Bible says he was the wisest man that ever lived because he had discernment. That's something Christians need to pray for. Like you said, everything's a lie. Everything's a spin from both sides and all sides and planetary. It's all a spin. It's all a lie. It never stops. And every now and then some bit of truth will come through. Well, how am I supposed to know what's true and what's not true? That's probably our biggest problem right now. The only way you know is you got to ask him daily, please give me discernment. I don't know what I'm looking at. Right. Please give me discernment. Pray the prayer that Solomon prayed back in the day. And guess what, man, if you're serious about that, and, and he lives in you, you've given your life to him, he will give you discernment. It doesn't mean you're bulletproof and you'll get them all right, but you will all of a sudden have a calm that comes over you because now he is, he is, he is, he'll just make your senses go off like, ah, or something over here. You go, wow, I, I think that's actually true. And then you dive into it and you go, yep, that's actually true. And then you pick up the book and read what it says. You go, that lines up. That's true. That's the biggest problem people have. And it's the devil's biggest trick is to spin you into such a tornado of confusion that you just stay in that state until you die. That, right. is, that is his entire goal. Wow. You know, I, I uh, for people that are listening right now that may be on the fence or they don't have really a, a big understanding of what the Bible represents or what it is. Can you explain a little bit what the first, you know, Adam being the how Jesus was, from my understanding, the second Adam, the second uh, t t who came to fix what uh, the, the 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 sin of Adam, correct? He came to fix right. the, you know. Well, yeah, Adam. Yeah, I mean, Adam created the original sin. Right, and, uh, and Jesus Christ came to fix that. Can and, you explain to someone, well, uh, on an elementary, what that means? Elementary yeah, level. So, so Jesus came to atone for it, not to fix it. He came to pay for that price, pay the price for that sin. So and all future sin, correct? And all future every sin, sin that okay. will ever be created. It says that when he was hanging on the cross, God the Father had to turn away from him. He could not look at him anymore because Jesus Christ became sin. He took on every sin that's ever been or that ever will be. The worst things you can think of times trillions of times. He took all of that on yours, mine, everybody watching this. He became that to the point where his father could not even look at him. He said, why have you forsaken me? And because he did forsake him at that, at that minute. Imagine that you're telling me that the alpha, the omega, that the son of God allowed a bunch of human beings to beat him mercilessly, drag him, rip his beard out, drive nails through him, humiliate him, hit him with a spear. I mean, tortured him to death and at any minute jesus christ said could have said i'm done with you whoosh and everything's gone let's start over let's start over and he never did that he allowed them to take him all the way down on a cross to the point where his own father could not look at him and forsook him that's who jesus christ is this is not santa claus up in the clouds right so what he did by doing that the devil was throwing a party that day Yay, we finally killed Jesus. We did it, guys. High five. We killed Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're going to win now. 
what did that actually do? It it was the final defeat. The final defeat when he came back from the dead, when he resurrected three days later, that's the end. That that became the end times at that exact second. That's when it started. That's when the clock started ticking on old, on old Lucifer. Started ticking. And now we find ourselves in 24. And it's different than it was back then because a lot of the prophecies, as we know, are now possible because of the advancements in tech and what's going on in our world. You can do basically anything you've seen prophesied can now happen. And I think that becomes the immediacy of these kinds of conversations. And the reason I wrote the song Revelation, why that song hit me when it did, and why I was told to go out and blast it, you know, was to was to make people pay attention and realize, guys, this is immediate. It's at your doorstep. When you go back and read Revelation now or Matthew 24 now, those words explode off the page at you because you can point at something in reality, in the physical. You go, that's what that is. You can see it. Whereas for the last 2000 years, everybody thought this was science fiction. Like, I don't even know how this is possible. Well, well that's why I say that's why I say we have to have a fighting chance because Generation Z. What about the generation after them? I mean, there's there's no hope. I mean, it's like. <laughs> I do. Well, I mean, it's terrible. What, 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 a... The narcissism's off the charts. I mean, AI yeah. runs everything. How are you going to know what's real, what's not? That yeah. in itself is a line that I don't believe that, yeah. that we can't cross. I mean, it's 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 already here. It's the AI is so powerful now. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can write all your music with AI now. Yep. No, I think AI is no doubt part of what's been prophesied. No doubt about it. What's the greatest alarm clock? For a human being, what's the greatest thing they can experience to wake them up? P A I N, pain. Yeah, nothing will wake you up faster than a lot of pain. Oh, yeah, Emotional pain, 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 pain. Yeah. You know, you've been hit in the face. I bet that wakes you up pretty quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you get used to it after a while. But right, right. You know what, what so, woke me up was my near death experiences. To be quite honest, with you. that's what got sure. me. Sure. Yeah, know. I think America's got that coming. I I hope that that the Lord gives us a near-death experience. I hope he does to give us one last shot at turning back to him one more time before he before the big wave rolls through. I really hope. But if he doesn't, he doesn't. We'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, it's it's up to each individual person. There's no preacher, priest, rabbi, or anybody standing in between you and God, folks. It's you and him. Anytime you want, anytime, anywhere, you can reach out and he's he's right there. You know, before I let you go, I want to ask you, um, from its conception to its to its final fruition, your song, Revelation, how long did it take to make the song, write the song, to make it uh, from, from when you first started getting the messages or whatever to the video? Uh -huh. What was the budget for the video? I mean, how fast did this all just happen for you? And to uh, where it this... hit number one, like how fast was this process? So I would say all in about 10 months. So it was November of 2023 when, wow. when I got the, when I got the download. Wow. That quick. And that's, yeah, that's when I wrote it. And then, um, and then I rec started recording on it, uh, December of 23. I spent two months working on that recording just cause I was like, I'm gonna take my time with this. I kept adding things. I'd take things away. I'd re-sing this, re-sing that. Like I got to nail this. Finally got it to where bingo, that's it. Then in February of 24, I shot that video. I had to reach out to Nick Searcy. That's who's playing the devil. Well, I've had on my show. I, was, I recognize yeah, him. I was like, incredible. I know that guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, an acclaimed actor. He's one of us, though. He's one yeah, of he's us. Yeah, he's a good dude. I like that guy. And yeah, then, I was like, then, I had him on my show. And then Hollywood Yates is playing Michael the Archangel, who was, uh, you remember the show American Gladiator, the big yeah. blonde guy? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's Hollywood Yates. Is that him? American yeah. Gladiators, the this, this sitcom in the or the show in the 80s, 90s, was it? Well, yeah, where they would stand up and fight civilians and fight each other with, like a yeah. gladiator. Yeah, yeah. But the, all the blonde hair. Yeah, that, wow. that's that's, that's uh, Hollywood Yates. So I got them all together. We shot the video in late February of 24. And then I was ready to go. I'm like, okay, the song's done. The video's gone. Let's go. And I sat around for a couple of days going, I wonder what's the best way to introduce this to the world. Cause I mean, I gotta, it's gotta be something huge. I don't know what. So I had gotten Tucker Carlson's phone number in months past. I said, man, Tucker would be a quite a way to <laughs> reveal this piece of work. So I texted Tucker. I said, Hey, can I send you a new song? I just wrote called revelation. He goes, yeah, man. 
So I sent him the audio and he hits back and he goes, what in the world did I just listen to? What is this? Like, wow. And I said, let me send you the video. So then I sent him the video and he hits back and he goes, you have to come sit down with me. Let's do a whole thing. But this was before about, you released it. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how to put it out. Like, what's the entry point on something this important? I mean, I'm never going to write this song twice, man. And this how well did you know deal. Tucker? Were you just kind of fly by friend? Like, hey, what's going on? Or what, did you know each other pretty well? I, I'd run into him at Fox. I'd run into him at a couple of events um, and just, you know, knew how to get a hold of him. And so I hit him up and he's like, you got to come up. I'm like, here we go, man. I bet March I'll go be with Tucker. And here we go in March. And he goes, yeah, man, let's set it up. And then his his producers hit me up and said, we're really looking forward to having you come do Tucker's show July the 12th. And this is February. That's the before. No, Mr. July the 12th. They said July the 12th is up. I know, but that's right like before Trump was almost assassinated. Like, right. That's right. The so think, wow, so that's let's crazy. play this. Let's play it out, man. Play it out. So I sit on this thing, March, April, May, June, the first half of July. I'm ready to go see Tucker. Finally, been sitting on the video and the song all these months, man. It's driving me nuts. But I, I just felt in my gut, Tucker's the way to go. I get up to Tucker, and when I go, let's see, I, I think it was actually the 15th is when I did Tucker. The 13th is when Trump was almost assassinated. Okay. So two days before I talk about spiritual warfare, the end times, revelation, and all this stuff, what's every, where's everybody's minds at? Uh, that Trump, Trump, yeah. God yep. turned Trump's head just at the right time to let it go by. And even atheists were saying that's impossible. Unexplainable. Maybe there is a God after all. I mean, everybody was talking like that. And then boom, here comes my song. So you tell me who the greatest booking agent is. Wow. Like, who's, who's the best? Wait, wait, wait. When was your song released? It, uh, I put it out July the 12th. I did the interview with Tucker on July the 15th. So, and the so when you put it out, 13th. when you put it out, you just, is, is it as simple as you just put out the video, you put out the video, right? When on I went on, I went on X and, and, and YouTube and rumble and truth and all that. And I said, here's my new song. It's called revelation. And I put it out and it, and it, it started to go, but then Tucker was two days, two, three days after that. And Trump is almost assassinated in between those two things. So was, was Tucker, it after it Tucker that it just blew up? Huge. Boom. Wow. So before then, before Tucker, was it like 50,000 range, 20,000 range, 100,000 range? Where was it at? Well, on the chart, it was it was in the top top 15, approaching top okay. 10 on the chart. <clears throat> and then when the Tucker piece hit, man, it just went. Boom. I mean, it yeah, exploded. Stratosphere. And that was the point. I will say before we let each other go, if you if you go on my YouTube channel, it's John Rich Music, where you just show the thing. I think I've got six or seven recorded conversations with my dad who i told you about earlier in the interview where we talk about all these subjects in, including adults who were abused as kids and, and how how the bible says to untangle that mess like very important things that are on my youtube channel and on my rumble channel so right here if you guys ever want to dig this into some it, stuff right? go go listen to that john rich is this your is this your uh, channel right That's here me. Right? all right yeah. cool all right yeah please please subscribe to him folks um, yeah, this is just, so everything has just been super surreal for you right now. It's like, well, I, hmm. how does it feel, man? Like, uh, just tell me just, how do you feel right now? Well, do you feel like just, I feel like, uh, of, of all the times I've disappointed him and angered him. This is probably not one of those times. Wow. Like he, he gave me a song. He told me what to do with it. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world to go out in front of God and everybody and talk about what this song is talking about. But I swallowed hard and did it. And um, I hope I made him happy. You know, I, I did what he told me to do. Um, it's It's been, the video has been viewed millions of times. It's been covered uh, more reactions than I've ever seen in my life on something. I hope it hits the mark and I hope it gets people to pick that book back up and read it for yourself. Read Matthew 24, go read that three or four times after you watch this interview. I don't care what your preacher says. I don't care what your mom and daddy taught you. Go read what Matthew 24 says. That is the truth. And if you lean on that, you'll be okay. One last question. How has the country music scene or the industry been treating you since this song exploded? 
Is it been there's, quiet? There's no is treatment. It... Wow. No treatment. No, I mean, why? I don't. Why do I don't think... exist to them, and they don't exist to me. It's that. So you they, can care less, really. <clears throat> hey. Yeah. If wicked people think well of you, you're not saying it correctly. You do not want wicked people to like you. That's another problem Christians have and Americans in general is that they go, well, I don't want to stand up and really say what I think because somebody's going to say something bad about me or look at me funny or whatever. Well, then congratulations, you're complicit with w wickedness. The validation that you hit the mark is that all kinds of people are upset at you all the time. And the Bible actually says, rejoice when you are persecuted for bearing mm. my name. Jesus was saying this. Rejoice, not clap your hands, not go, not give me a thumbs up. Rejoice, like be exuberant, be over the top, happy when you are persecuted for bearing my name. When they come at you hard, be really happy because you've made me happy when that happens. And so short of that attitude, Nino, people are just going to keep riding the fence. And guess who owns the fence? The devil owns that right. fence. So I hope that what I'm doing and what you're doing, I'm proud of you, man. I mean, you come you. out. You come out and you are asking questions that represent what millions of people are asking. I, I would advise you that when someone goes into something that you know is directly not true based on what the Bible says about it, call them out on it. Okay. Ha have, have the debate, yeah, man. man, because yeah, a lot, a lot of people listen to you. You're a, you're a great um, example. You're a, you're a, an honest example, I believe of where tens of millions of people are today. Their, I'm just trying to be a conduit and like, I'm trying to be yeah. as transparent as possible. But you know? also but, don't let them, but if somebody starts spouting something that, you know, runs absolutely counter to the word of God that, you know, to be true, you got to call them out on it. Point you have taken. To. Point for, taken. For their own benefit and for your audiences. You don't want your audience to think, well, maybe that is true. Nino didn't say anything, didn't yeah. push back on it. So no, man, you've no. earned the right to push back. You, you're you're you. an important guy. You need to do that. Man, I, I'll I'll take that advice wholeheartedly. Thank you very much. Um, wow, John. I uh I knew I you were gonna take you, me man. to school today. <laughs> hey, I, I, I really enjoy Bible you. school. <laughs> I, I like I like you personally. I've never met you in person. I hope I get to. Yeah, we will. Uh, we can trade maybe we can trade info. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd I'd love to meet you in person, man. And you keep doing the great work you're doing. Thank you. All right, folks. John, stay with me just for a second.